In this talk, we will learn about the evolution of the immune system in animals. The immune system in higher organisms are highly evolved because they need to protect the organisms against a wide variety of pathogens. Pathogens include viruses, which are considered as non-living but still have the ability to infect living organisms. Bacteria are another class of pathogens that are known to infect higher organisms. Fungi can be unicellular or multicellular and are known to cause infections. Another class of organisms are protists, which are usually unicellular for the most part, but there are some multicellular protists, and they're also known to be able to infect higher organisms. The final class of organisms that can cause infections are helminths, and thus the immune system has to be able to protect the host from all these different types of pathogens. It is able to do so by different strategies, and one of them involves the production of many different types of antimicrobial compounds. In the case of higher organisms, they can also synthesize different proteins that can recognize pathogens, and they have evolved mechanisms to make variations of the same protein that plays a role in recognition and elimination of different types of pathogens. In the case of higher organisms, the immune system also retains the memory of pathogens, and so it remembers what kind of pathogen it has encountered in the past. This complex immune system is the product of millions of years of evolution. So to understand how the immune system of higher organisms has evolved, we need to go back and look at the evolution of life on Earth. Prokaryotes are the earliest living forms that evolved on Earth, and they can be grouped in the kingdom of eubacteria and archaebacteria. Prokaryotes are unicellular, and they do not have membrane-bound organelles inside their cells. They compete with each other for space and nutrients, and so they have evolved different mechanisms to protect themselves from other organisms. These include the production of toxins to prevent the growth of other types of prokaryotes or even simpler eukaryotes. Additionally, prokaryotes can be infected by viruses and thus they have mechanisms to protect themselves against viruses. This is usually done by preventing the adsorption and entry of viruses, synthesizing enzymes like restriction endonuclease that can degrade viral DNA, disrupting the viral life cycle, and evolving the CRISPR-Cas system which is a system that is able to not only protect against viruses, but maintain memory of viruses that have infected the organism previously. Protists are eukaryotic organisms that have membrane-bound structures. This has allowed these organisms to evolve cellular processes like phagocytosis and exocytosis. Protists are able to protect themselves from other organisms by employing different strategies. One strategy is the synthesis of toxic chemicals. This strategy is observed in prokaryotes as well and hence is an evolutionarily conserved strategy. Prokaryotes have also evolved membrane-bound organelles like lysosomes, which have digestive enzymes in them that can act on different types of macromolecules. Lysosomes can be used to kill microbes, and as shown in this figure, if a protist is able to take up a bacterium by phagocytosis, it retains it in a vesicle, and ultimately this vesicle can fuse with the lysosome. Once this fusion occurs, the enzymes present in the lysosome can act on that bacterium and kill that bacterium. This way, lysosomes can be used for defense purposes as well as for digestion and obtaining nutrition. Protists can also make these structures called as extrasomes, which are membrane-bound vesicles with molecules in them that are released into the environment by exocytosis. There are different types of extrasomes, 
and one of them are the trichosis, which provide mechanical defense. When we look at the figure to the right, we are observing a paramecium, which is a ciliated protist, and we can see the trichocyst present throughout the cell, but if we focus on the part that is outlined in blue, those dot-like structures are the trichocyst. When we look at a magnified view of this structure, then the trichocyst is actually a spindle-shaped structure. In addition to trichosis, protists also have extrosomes that can act as chemical defenses. The different types of extrosomes that act as a chemical defense strategy are the pigmentosis, mucosis, haptosis, toxicis, etc. All of these will have chemicals, for example, mucosis will have mucus or toxicis can have toxic compounds that are released into the environment and can then help the protist defend itself from other organisms. Protists have also evolved defenses to protect themselves from foreign DNA or viruses, and this is called as RNA interference. RNA interference is a mechanism to protect against viruses, and it has similarities to the CRISPR-Cas system that is found in prokaryotes. To look at the eukaryotic system that helps in protection against viruses, if double-stranded RNA that is not part of the cell which has been obtained either from a virus or from the environment comes inside the cell, then it is recognized by a complex of proteins called dicer. Dicer has endonuclease activity and thus it can cleave this double-stranded RNA to smaller fragments that are called as small interfering RNA. These double-stranded small interfering RNA then associate with another complex called as the risk or argonaut complex. These small interfering RNA duplexes are then dissociated to form single-stranded small interfering RNA that remain associated with the risk argonaut complex. This complex that has the small interfering RNA can now form complementary base pairs with target RNA that may have been introduced in the cell due to a viral infection. And by forming these complementary interactions, the risk argonaut complex is able to cleave that target RNA and this way protection against viruses is obtained. Invertebrates were the first animals that evolved from protists. They are multicellular and are much more complex than protists. This allows them to be targeted by other types of organisms, and thus they have to evolve different protective strategies to defend themselves. Some of these strategies are evolutionarily conserved, like synthesizing toxic substances. These can include antimicrobial peptides like defensins. Defensins are able to interact with the plasma membrane of pathogens and they result in the formation of pores. Thus, the integrity of the plasma membrane is compromised and the pathogen is now more susceptible to die. Another substance that interferes with pathogens is an enzyme called lysozyme. Lysozyme is known to act on the peptidoglycan of bacteria. Peptidoglycan is a rigid structure that is present as part of the cell wall of bacteria. Lysozyme is able to act on this rigid peptidoglycan and it cleaves it thereby causing the cell wall to be more unstable and thus the bacteria is now more susceptible to die. Other strategies that invertebrates employ are RNA interference, which is also an evolutionarily conserved mechanism. Invertebrate animals have also evolved pattern recognition receptors, which are proteins that can be either secreted into the environment 
or remain on the membrane of cells or be intracellular and thereby remain in the cytoplasm. The pattern recognition receptors are able to recognize components of pathogens called pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Pathogens can have a variety of pathogen-associated molecular patterns that include polysaccharides that can be found in fungi and bacteria, as well as lipopolysaccharide, tichoic acids, and nucleic acids. Each pattern recognition receptor is able to sense a different type of PAM, and this way the host cells are able to detect the presence of pathogens. In addition to pathogen-associated molecular patterns, there are pattern recognition receptors that are also able to sense damage-associated molecular patterns, which are basically injured host cells or host tissues. Another strategy that invertebrates have employed is the evolution of cells that are able to move throughout the body and protect different parts of the organism. An example of such cells in insects are the hemocytes. It should be noted that plants did not evolve such a strategy, and hence we normally don't find cells in plants that are able to move to different parts of plants. And thus, this seems to be more unique to the animal kingdom. Invertebrates have also evolved genes that are able to give rise to many different isoforms, and this helps in the elimination of the pathogen. A well-studied molecule that fits this criteria is DSCAM. DSCAM stands for Down Syndrome Cell Adhesion Molecule, and it has been very well studied in the insect Drosophila. It is made by fat body cells and hemocytes, and hemocytes can be considered as the immune cells of insects. DSCAM plays important roles in phagocytosis and the subsequent elimination of pathogens, and thus it plays an important role in host defense. When we look at the gene structure of DSCAM, we can observe that there are many exons, but in the case of some exons, the exons are in the form of clusters. For example, when we look at the fourth exon, there are 12 alternative exons available. Similarly, in the sixth exon, there are 48 alternative exons available. When we look at the ninth exon, we're able to see 33 alternative exons. Finally, towards the end of the gene, we can see two alternative exons. Whenever alternative exons are available, then only one of those alternative exons can be used. Thus, when alternative splicing occurs following the transcription of the DSCAM gene, the mRNA that is then processed and formed can have only one of the 12 alternative exons that's found in the fourth exon, and it can have only one of the 48 alternative exons that is found in that sixth exon. Similarly, it can have only one of the 33 alternative exons that's present in the ninth exon. And finally, towards the end, it can have only one of the two alternative exons. This type of alternative splicing results in many different isoforms, and thus we can have different versions of the DSCAM proteins produced by Drosophila. Thus, the same protein, DSCAM, can have many variations, and the variations can be observed in the regions that are outlined in these black boxes, which is where we see the alternative exons present. The first vertebrates that evolved were fish. Fish can be grouped into three main classes, which are the agnatha, and these are fish that do not have jaws, the chondrichthys, which are fish that do have jaws, but have cartilage instead of true bone. And then the osteichthys, which have true bone and are jawed. The jawless vertebrates or the jawless fish were the ones that evolved first. The 
there were many types of jawless vertebrates in the past, but right now there are only two main groups, and they are the hagfish and the lampreys. Vertebrates are much more complex than other organisms like invertebrates or protists, and thus they have to have multiple strategies to protect themselves. Many strategies are similar to what is observed in invertebrates, which includes the synthesis of toxic substances and the production of pattern recognition receptors. Vertebrates also have cells that can move throughout the body to protect the organism, but they have more types of cells for this purpose compared to invertebrates. Vertebrates also show the presence of RNA interference strategies. Jawless vertebrates have also evolved genes that can give rise to many different variations of the same protein to aid in the elimination of pathogens. Now this strategy is also observed in invertebrates, however the mechanism that jawless vertebrates employ is different than what is observed in invertebrates. These proteins are normally made in the lymphoid cells that are a type of immune cell present in the jawless vertebrates. This phenomenon, where a gene can give rise to many different variations of the same protein, is also observed in certain immune cells in jawed vertebrates. It's seen in the B and T lymphocytes that play important roles in adaptive immunity. The mechanism involves DNA recombination, where the sequence of the DNA gets changed. This is different than what is usually observed with DSCAM in invertebrates. The mechanism by which the DNA recombination occurs is different in jawed and jawless vertebrates. Even though the mechanism of DNA recombination is different, we are still able to see similarities between the jawed and jawless vertebrates related to this phenomenon. In the jawed vertebrates, the B cells express the B cell receptor that is secreted in response to an infectious agent, thereby generating a humoral response. Similarly, jawless vertebrates have cells similar to B cells that express VLRB that are also secreted as part of their humoral response in the presence of infectious agent. Jawed vertebrates have T cells that can express an alpha beta T cell receptor that is part of the cellular immune response. A similar T cell expressing VLRA is made in the jawless vertebrates with a similar function. The jawed vertebrates have a T cell that can make a gamma delta T cell receptor which also plays a role in the cellular response. The jawless vertebrates have a similar type of lymphoid cell which expresses VLRC that plays an important role in the cellular response. Thus, even though the process occurs differently in jawed and jawless vertebrates, they accomplish the same function. The immune system in vertebrates has many different arms to it. There are different types of proteins like complement, defensins, lysozyme, etc. that aid in defense. Similarly, there are different types of cells that protect us from infectious agents. These include monocytes, neutrophils, lymphocytes, dendritic cells, and many more. The lymphatic system also plays a key role in defense and includes lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes. Organs like the bone marrow, spleen, and thymus aid in generating cells that help in defense. All of these different players work together to protect our body from pathogens that can cause diseases. With this, we come to the end of our talk where we learned about the evolution of immunity in different organisms and look at the defense mechanisms observed in invertebrates and vertebrates in more details.